Hey guys, Cavecan here. It's been a while because of this whole... I was not able to, yeah, recently post any videos, um, unfortunately. Uh, the thing is, I'm out of my man cave for now. I'm at my sister's place. And um, yeah, so I don't have my laser cutter here. I don't have uh, my 3D printer here. I have nothing. I have my laptop. And I thought, um, well, I definitely should do a video. I was checking on my laser videos that I uploaded uh, the last years and uh, there was one particular video that um, gained a lot of momentum in the last weeks um, which is a video about um, the software that came with, uh, came with the K40 laser. Um, there are different softwares um, depending on from what supplier you get your uh, K40. In my case it was Coral Laser and Coral Laser is basically a version of Coral Draw, in my case Coral Draw 12 that came with a little plugin um, that enables the functions of the K40 laser to communicate with um, with Coral Draw. Now, um, as you can see here, um, these are those little icons on the top here. So you have like the engraving mode, you have the cutting mode, and you have um, some setups you can um, change and move around. Now, I thought maybe I can show you something which I find pretty interesting. How to get let's say some sort of photo in the right um, scale into your software and make it ready to be cut out. Um, therefore let's have a look here. Therefore I go to import and I already took a photo of something that I want to cut out and in my case this is the gyromite cartridge from the NES. I usually use a quarter that I put next to the objects I need to um, cut out and that's because we need to scale it um, to have it well in the right scale let's say 99% the size of the original cartridge in this case uh, therefore um, yeah I put this quarter here and I will start by clicking on the ellipse tool and uh, just draw a little circle here and then I go to my measurements up here and um, now you could theoretically Google this, um, depending on, I mean, you could even like buy stickers or you could uh, cut out your own stickers that have a certain diameter um, as a reference. So in my case the quarter is 24.26 millimeters. So I will put this in here, 24.26, 24.26, okay. So, now we have a circle that basically has the exact size of our quarter. Now I need to rescale the picture until it fits. And as I'm doing this on my laptop you see that I can't do this like in real real time, so I have to guess it a little bit uh, until it fits and matches up with my pre-drawn circle. can zoom in a little bit here. Not so simple when you don't have any real-time <laughs> preview, but um, you see the idea here. So I will try to fit this as good as I can for now to get it almost the right size of that circle, which is not bad already. Uh, very important is you need to be in a right angle um, to get this picture done because you don't want, want to have any deformations. And if you see here on this coin, you see that, of course, we see the sides of the coin here and we don't see them here just because of, you know, perspective. Um, in my case, um, as this is just a sample, I would say this is good for now. I just want to cut out the basic shape of that cartridge. Now, therefore, I will um, delete this circle first. Therefore, I will select our, what is still a, I think it's a PNG or JPEG file. And um, as I explained in my other video um, about that software, uh, we will need to vectorize this thing. So we need um, the software to see those lines and to not no longer see it as a complete photo or picture. So therefore, I simply click on it, then I click with the right mouse button, and here we have two very important, interesting little, well, in-program programs. <laughs> so I will go on Edit Bitmap 
and this is basically a small version of uh, Coral Photo Paint and what this does is this treats like a picture like Photoshop so you can you know move things around and scale it up and change contrast and whatever uh, last that's exactly what we need to do so I go on I think it's on image adjust and we need to um, adjust the brightness and the contrast of um, this photo because we basically only need those outlines and as you can see here I already modified this a little bit so this usually comes opens up and everything's on zero I put this about minus 74 on brightness and plus 95 on uh, contrast plus 95 on intensity as well but it always of course depends of your onto well, on your photo um, but I want to have the sharpest contrast possible to get the outlines. Okay, so we brought down the contrast and the brightness of our object. Um, as it is a three-dimensional object, of course, we get some shadows somewhere. I could get rid of them right now by using uh, the rectangular masking tool and um, yeah, just cut out all of these shadows. But for demonstrational purposes, I will leave them for now, so we see afterwards in which problems we could run into. And maybe also get rid of them by using uh, some more or different filters. Uh, for now, what I next need to do is, I want to straighten this thing out, because it is not 100% straight. Um, because, yeah, it's just a picture, a photo, right? So what I will do is, I will choose the rectangular rectangle tool just as a guide or helping line, help line, and I will draw a rectangle just here so I can see that um, it is almost straight. Let's see how it looks down here. Well, it could maybe be rotated like a very tiny amount, so therefore I click on our background picture as we have two layers now with that rectangle. I have to select the picture I go to image, rotate, rotate custom, and here I can rotate the picture clockwise or counterclockwise. In my case, I would need to rotate it probably 0 0.1 degrees counterclockwise. 0 0.1 degrees. Okay, so that was not much, but it pretty much helped to straighten this out. And as you can see now with the helping, with the help of this rectangle, we see that it is pretty much straight. Even we have some lines here that will cause us to have more note points that we probably don't need, but we will see that in the next step. So I go ahead, click on this, push delete. We don't need this. Um, I will keep this for now. We can delete it too now, um, this coin. We could also uh, do this later on. Let's say for now I am finished in Coral Photo Paint. So I go to File, Save As, um, let's call it Gyromite, um, Gyromite Paint, Save, and then we go back into Coral Draw. I will select our um, original photo and I hit Delete because we don't need it anymore. I go to File, Import, and we import our file that we just saved. You see this little uh, angle here? This is just a positioning tool, so where should Coral Draw put our picture? Just put it here for now, like this. Okay, so we have our um, scaled and um, contrast reduced picture here. I click on it, I select it, I go on the click with the right mouse button and then we have our little pop-up menu and now we go into Trace Bitmap and Trace Bitmap is a pretty awesome tool especially when it comes to photos, pictures, everything that needs to be vectorized to be able to be cut with our K40 laser. So I go ahead click on that so it opens another little app that comes with um, Coral Draw and uh, as you can see we have a couple of options here first of all I have my magnifying glass and I zoom out so we have our entire picture and then it gives us some uh, tools here that are pretty interesting um, we have an outline tool this is a very simple outline tool as you can see here when I select it it will open a little menu here 
So we have um, the accuracy. When I would go ahead and uh, click on the trace, it will show me um, the trace result in that window here. So I just go ahead and do that for now. And you see we have a lot of stuff going on here. And sometimes it takes a long time to calculate this because I set this on 100. So it's 100% accuracy, so it will have uh, tons and tons of little note points, which in my case here is way too much because I just need that outline. And I could go ahead and go on the center outline or uh, center line tool, but this is more, let's say you would draw a line and you hit the center line. So from that line, it would just trace the middle line or the middle of that line we draw. I don't know if you get that, but uh, let's say a center line uh, outline, which means when I would draw a pretty thick line, it would um, trace both sides of that line. So we have the center line and we have the outer lines and there would be two because it's outgoing from the center line. Um, but we don't care about this for now that much. I mean, this is all stuff you can play around with. Um, you don't break anything. Um, you can trace results or trace um, your picture as often as you want. This will always update um, to your current settings. There is no other window in the background or something that will open. So um, it's a very straightforward little tool. Um, in my case, I will go on the advanced outline tool. So it's that little thing with that blue plus. And you see it opens up a, a little bit more um, stuff here. So some more options. Um, so for my settings, uh, as I just want to cut out the actual cartridge without any gyromite logo or whatever on it, I just want the outline of that cartridge. I go to Silhouette. Um, this is a noise filter, um, which say I don't need all of this detail going on for now. So I set this to high. It is already set to high. Often it is set to none. I will set it to high because I don't want or I want to get rid of all those details. I really just want the outlines. Um, for now, here are two options that are still um, active. But um, when I would push on this uh, button, it will give me a message. I can do this. Oh, it won't. But usually <laughs> it gives me a message um, when this picture is not contrasted enough it will tell me to make this picture uh, black and white uh, simply because well the laser does not need any color and um, it is basically easier to trace something that is black and white than uh, having uh, hundreds of colors in there so I will go ahead and do that and therefore I go to image mode black and white and it opens that little window with a threshold leveler so um, yeah, and I bring this down because I want, and now you can see here that our shadow here starts to disappear. But in the meantime, you see that we also get issues up here because it starts to take away some of the outline of the cartridge. So I will push this down until I get rid of the shadow. And now you see it, it have it has eaten into our actual outlines, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, you could go ahead, go get rid of the shadow and um, keep this way further up so you have an exact outline. Or in my case, also for demonstrational purposes, I will um, keep it like this and um, I will get rid maybe of these not node points later on. So I will just hit OK. Um, now uh, we have this option node reduction um, we don't want to have too much nodes because it is basically more or less a rectangular shape we don't have a lot of curves in it we have some curved little corners here and there but uh, most of it it's not circular when it would be a circle you would go ahead and put this way higher up because we want a lot of node points to get it you know a circle because when we reduce these um, node uh, points uh, yeah, we will get less and less node points and the circle gets more and more rectangular or like diamond shape because um, there are just not enough node points. In my case, I will put this down to like one because I really don't need much. I just need like the, yeah, the most important uh, key frames or node points on the corners, maybe some down here in these rounded areas. But uh, for now, I try it with one. Um, and then we have this option here, the node type. 
Now, um, smooth will mean it will uh, create node points that are curved. They are not line nodes, but curved nodes. Um, which, uh, how should I explain this? When you import this back to Coral Draw um, and you want to remove some of the node points, it can bring you issues because curved node node points tend to um, to twist and it will make you lines that go all over the place. Then we have the minimum object size option, which I usually leave at 40. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what this does. If you know, just leave me a comment down below. Um, would be pretty nice to understand. I think, let's give it just a try. Let's go do trace. I click on this and you see that, uh, yeah, we lost most of um, those details as we set the noise filter to high. Um, as we don't need them anyways, we just need like the outline. You see that we have some little minor um, imperfections here. You see that this I can probably, um, yeah, I can get rid of some of the node points later on. So let's say this would be okay for now, as this is just a little test. I mean, uh, you could play around with all those settings for hours, and uh, sometimes you have to because it can get a little tricky depending on the complexity of the shape you want to do. Now I go to File, Save Trace Result. Um, let's call this, uh, well, less trace and uh, less notes. That was a test I made before, so I could just use this. Let's overwrite this. Okay, and sometimes depending on how much nodes you have, it will show you a line here um, when it's saving because it could take a couple of minutes. And sometimes you just go ahead and save the trace result, you jump back to Cobalt Draw and you try to open it and you can't find the file. Well, that's because <laughs> Cobalt Trace is still, you know, rendering on, uh, on the file. So in this case, it already um, did that. Uh, I go back to Coral Draw. Um, now we can select this. I will hit delete. I um, don't need this anymore. Oops. Then I go to File, Open, because now we have a vectorized graphic. We don't have to import it because it's no longer a photo, but it is a vectorized graphic. I go to Open. I open the file we just created. And there we have it. Now when I click on it and I right click on it, you see I can ungroup this. For now that's exactly what I want to do because I want to get rid of all this stuff. So now when I select this and I pull this over, you see that there is some stuff remaining here. So I can select this and hit delete. We don't need that. Get rid of it. And now we have this shape. Um, and this shape basically is the same thing or the same what we call vectorized. So it's like drawing a rectangle or an ellipse in Coral Draw. So I can go ahead and uh, change the color of it and I can make it translucent or black and that's exactly what I want to do. I want only the outline so I click with the right mouse button and it gives me the outline of my Nintendo cartridge. Now you see that there are plenty of little imperfections. I can go ahead now and uh, use the shape tool or first of all I will zoom in here then use the shape tool and get rid of some of these node points. I could simply like select them as is, like this, or I can go ahead and select each one of them by holding down the shift key and uh, select one after each other. So these lines always won't be 100% straight. I mean, we are taking a picture or we are outgoing from a photo, um, but um, you can get pretty close and sometimes it really depends what you're doing. Um, Sometimes it just saves time and it works or it is enough or precise enough for what uh, you want or what you need to do. So um, as I said before, I remove some of those um, keyframes and you see this line is a little bit, uh, well, it's not 100% straight. But um, all after all, it will do the job and I can also remove these here to keep this straight. You see that here we have a little issue with the line standing out. I could get, go ahead and um, spend some hours on this uh, to smoothen this out depending on how precise I need it to have. Another little thing I want to show you is as we, in this case, talking about a symmetrical shape, what we can do is we could mirror this thing um, just to make both sides 100% uh, similar. For this I will um, hit again the shape tool. Oh, I will remove these keyframes here. And then, more or less in the middle, I will go ahead, right-click, and um, select Break Apart. 
and I do the same thing down here I will break this apart then I need to zoom in pretty closely even even closer because I need to select one side here so I just drag them over like this I break the whole thing apart and I also drag this over to separate one side from the other now important now is I don't move this side because I need to have the exact width of um, the shape so now that I dragged these over I have this gap here and now we need to select one half of our of our drawing here and to do this um, I select it or you can just use um, the pick tool you select the whole thing right click and then break curve apart because we need to have two separate um, things here uh, after that shape tool and I select wait I select one half of it in this case I want to I want to have this half to be copied over and then you can uh, press CTRL and C or you go to edit copy or cut uh, sometimes I use the cut function because simply you see what's happening and you see it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, I go to paste and I paste it a second time because we need it on the other side as well. Paste. And then we have um, these mirror buttons here. So we have this is the vertical mirror button and this is the horizontal mirror button. And we want to flip it horizontally. So I paste this twice. I flip it and you can see that is exactly what it did and now I can just drag it over the old line like this and now the only challenge is to <laughs> choose the old line and get rid of it if I do that I have to make sure to drag it on the same to the same width as the old one like this and now I can select that I can get rid of it as I said I could made a way better job of smoothing this out by hand um, with the node points but this is just a demonstration so I don't um, go into that effort right now now I can hook these up together do the same thing to the bottom line like this they are already together as I said, we are not having 100% straight lines, so I just <laughs> I just pull them up and uh, stick them together like this. Okay. Okay. So now you see we have our cartridge um, outlines pretty much uh, done. As you can see, when I uh, import this again, our um, ba -ba -ba -ber, our paint file, put it next to it so you see wait um, you see it's pretty much the same thing but only the outlines what we now can do is we can select the whole thing right click and we can go on group so every time we select it it will select the whole thing and not only just one half because that sometimes i forgot it and it can be pretty messy because you have to undo everything to get it uh, back uh, to <laughs> Uh, straight shape um, yeah so this is pretty much it I will crop this over and when you put this over here you see that we have basically the exact perfect shape of our cartridge uh, what I also did sometimes is I already uh, bought me some 25 millimeter stickers uh, red ones the, the ones you can put into books and stuff uh, just as a reference and as they are sticky you can put them anywhere you just take a picture and you just have to be careful to be in the right angle and then you can treat it the same way that I did this and um, yeah and extract the uh, basic shape from it um, it works best with two-dimensional things like drawings because you don't you know don't have issues with too much shadows um, but it works pretty well and I'm using it pretty often. That was basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, as I said, this is not a 100% accurate thing, um, but for most things I do in things of accuracy, it was enough. It actually works better with a two-dimensional subject or like a photo of a poster, or you can extract, for example, the Corona logo from the Corona beer box. <laughs> Corona. and. Um, Two-dimensional things obviously work better because you won't have shade, uh, shadows or um, some sort of reflections. If you have any questions, just, just leave me a comment below. I'm a bit out of um, 
video ideas for now because I don't have my stuff with me. So um, I try to help if anybody has some questions about Coral Laser, about the K4D laser. Maybe not in the form of a video, but I will answer you for sure in the comments. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Give it a thumbs up if you, if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't. Subscribe, all these nice things, as some YouTuber would say. And um, yeah, I see you on the next one. Until then, see ya.